Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Pirmin, and I'm doing a talk about vector tile uh, production. So it's I can't promise any fancy maps. It will will be only about the the boring part. Um, I'm working for SourcePole, located in Switzerland. We do development, QGIS, QGIS server, and web mapping. So also and uh, also with vector tiles, and I do that together with Carsten Wellemann, who will take the map server part. There is a, a long tradition of benchmarking at FOS4G. So in 2008, there was the first, as I remember, uh, WMS benchmark uh, comparing uh, geo server and map server back then. Um, it grew uh, over the years, so that was the result back then. Um, uh, Map server was much faster than GeoServer. And in Barcelona 2010, we had uh, many more contestants in this WMS benchmark, and it, it went further for a few years. Um, and now we want to start the same with vector tiles. Uh, what we've chosen for benchmarking is natural earth data set. It is not that big as like OSM, it's, but it's not too small, so it's, it's a good middle size for doing benchmarks. Data is stored in PostJS. That's uh, a starting point we've chosen. It fits with the talk we just had. It's really a good uh, base if you create your own tiles, vector tiles. And you have created a test tile, so that was the goal to produce tiles uh, which look you can uh, render like that. And the benchmark is public on GitHub, so that's the only link we have in this talk. We defined the tile set, we gave it a name, we said, okay, we go to level six, which is not that much, but it's enough for our uh, benchmark, we define the tile size, and we stay in Web Mercator. And we define the layers we need. We need uh, country layer, names, some lines, uh, land border, and state. This was chosen to have all um, geometry types in it, and it was also uh, chosen that we, we do some uh, Preparation, so simplification is done for countries and for land border and states. This is not strictly necessary with this data set because this data set is optimized for, for doing maps, so it even has a, a property or a field which says in which zoom level you, sh you should so show uh, this feature, which we also use in the last column. So. Um, for instance, the states, they start at the deeper zoom level, or not all states are shown, and also land borders, which is also a requirement for the tile servers that they can have this uh, rare condition in, in PostGIS. And we need some attributes. We define the tables and the buffer size for polygons, at least. Yeah, that's about it. And what we also do is that we um, split one layer into, uh, we have two sources, one table for uh, set levels one to four, and another table for uh, five, six. That's more for uh, assuring that tile server has this important capability. And the first measurement we defined was how long does it take to generate all tiles? First on, on one computer and then with multiple processors. That's what you usually want to have for scaling. And what does that include? Uh, so for creating de vector tiles, you have to read from uh, the database, obviously, and, but you have to give a bounding box. You have to clip geometries, that's what you want, and you do simplification, snap to grid, usually for polygons, Douglas Poker for lines. We don't do label, generate label points here, and you will deliver 
MVT protobuf format. That's what we've chosen. So we're talking about uh, Mapbox vector tiles. And the second measurement we did, how many requests per second does the tile server deliver in web server mode? This is not uh, a benchmark everyone is interested in because you can serve tiles also statically without uh, live functionality. Um, but if you want to have updated tiles, maybe with live data, then this gets important that you really have a, a a web server included, or you can um, you can have a web server in front which delivers uh, updated tiles. So this is part of the benchmark. It's not part is this static file serving which we saw in the earlier talk, where you just need a web server or or even uh, the web server of a service provider for S3 and so on or a, a CDN. And we didn't test that all these cache and course headers are set. And also functionality like layer concatenation is not tested here. We measured that with WRK, which is a high performance load testing tool. Because for this kind of measurements, also the client can't be the bottleneck. So we start with little as uh, WMS started. We start with two contestants. The one is T-Rex and the other is Map Server. We try to include more. We would like to have a Geo Server, but we need help for doing that. We we would like to include Tegula, and we also try to include the STS MBT implementation, but we didn't have enough resources for doing that. And there are even many more. On, on that link, uh, what is available. But we show how the benchmark is built, how it's working, and other people can come in and, and test their servers. So a few words about T-Rex. The first one, uh, it's serving from PostGIS and also uh, GDAL files. It has a zero configuration mode, an embedded web, web server. It has even Maputnik included for styling. You can generate with uh, have a parallelization mode and get you a configuration template, and it also supports custom tile grids. It detects automatically layers in the database, has a simple configuration file. It automatically reprojects. That's not what you want here because that's way slower. And you can install a single executable from a package or you can run it in a docker container. And then I pass to Karsten for map server. Okay, so I have the map server part and uh, I thought um, I've been using map server for many years and that's one of my favorite rendering engines. It is one of the dinosaurs in the room is since 1994, written mostly in C and C++. We had actually some help and input from Steve Lyman, one of the, origi the origi original programmer that started this program. And uh, it has two modes. It has a CGI, FCGI application, and it has also an application, an API in many different flavors known as MapScript. And it is a general purpose engine for you know, rendering all kinds of output. So the MVT tile is one that is very new. It came in, I think, in version 7.2. And it's not well documented. And since I'm you know, so fond of map server and didn't hear many talks about it, I thought, oh, you know, last year in Dar es Salaam, I talked to us, Jeff McKenna, and I thought, oh, we should kind of reinvigorate the map server project. And I said, oh, wow, Perman did this uh, great MVT uh, testing suite with his um, T-Rex, so, so, so that, okay, since 7.2 we can render the uh, MVT tiles, but it's not really well documented, so I want to take on responsibility to put that in, what is in Steve Lime's head, and he gave us some input, and basically with this we have um, one text file configuration, and can you go to the next one? Or oh, actually that comes later, I guess. Okay. I start first with the T-Rex configuration, and yeah, I must confess that I'm the author of T-Rex, so uh, that was also the first motivation to build this benchmark was to benchmark T-Rex itself, to make it faster and to measure 
uh, how fast it is. And T-Rex is configured with a TOML text file, which is similar to uh, an INI file. So that's how it looks like. It has a, a data source, a grid, and then you define the tile set, and then you have uh, you can go into SQL if you like for uh, have a fine-tuned query for for each layer, and you can uh, define buffer size, simplification, SRID, and so on. And similar is the map server part. Yes, so you see kind of a screenshot having this map text file configuration in a text editor. Like on the upper part, there's one tag. You know, this is not the whole map file. So there is the output format, which says, you know, MVT. And then you have a couple of format options you can set. Actually, there's an error here because in the regular map file we used, we're using the 496 point size in, uh, on that format option and then set the edge buffer. I only want to point out, you know, if you're not familiar with a map file, that won't tell you much, but basically, it is very similar to other layers. The only thing you have to set is this format option. And then you have to think about a couple of things because the map file usually is used if you have different output like JPEG or PNG or something like rendering a raster map. Then um, the um, styling is done in the map file. However, in this uh, MVT, this is done on the client side. And so what is in here as, you know, style doesn't really matter, but there's a couple of points you need to render correctly the tiles in the same way as um, the other server does. You need the attributes. That was a table that Permin showed where you had these several layers and he was showing which attributes are used. And then, for example, to include that, and that was something that wasn't really clearly documented, was in this metadata, in this layer, you need to put in what output uh, uh, attributes you want to have. So the abbreviation of the country name and the name was needed to correctly show that on the map. While that is not part of the benchmark, but to correctly show the map later, that is really needed. And then there's something else, you know, certain things that can be optimized and we're still like in the early stage to do that for map server. There was something that is built into um, uh, T-Rex, for example, to include the zoom level so it can automatically take in the zoom level. Map files don't do that. So to correctly reproduce what um, uh, Perman already did, I would need to have multiple layers with different zoom levels. At the moment, you know, you can kind of try to optimize, you know, this is an SQL query, kind of similar. In the one for T-Rex, you have this where zoom level equals the one you're looking at. And then you might want to restrict the SQL to just the fields you need instead of using a star or something. So there's things you know you can try to add, you know, increase the performance. We added the extent of the each layer, and, and there's there's other things we will look at at the end where this is not totally comparable yet. So you know, as Perman already pointed out, you know, we need two things here. We need this map file to configure the output of map server, and then we also need. Um, uh, a caching engine, and so we needed. Uh, we used a map cache, which is you know in the map server suite. And to configure that, there's a map cache, there's XML file, which is kind of a, just a view here. And for people who haven't used map cache, there's a new version out, 1.8. So we use 1.6. This is you know effort made by Thomas Bonford. It's basically an Apache module that can be used. So that, that's pretty cool. And this is just an example for the configuration how that looks. So we started with a cheap testing environment, which was my notebook. Um, it has two cores for threads, 8 gig RAM and SSD disk. And we did three benchmark runs. That's the minimal start. And what I think what came out now, that's the interesting part or the part you're waiting for. Um, so on top is seeding um, up to level 6. Um, on single core without parallelization, and the lower part is seeding with four nodes, parallelization of four. What you see there is that both uh, engines parallelize quite good, so it's really the cores are used. Um, and the results here are that T Rex needs one minute 32 seconds for 5,000 tiles, which are 
45 tiles per second. This isn't huge. This is not enough for really a big data set. So it's just everything local and and and, and, and uh, like a medium notebook. And the map server needed three minutes 90 seconds for 5,400 tiles, and we didn't uh, check why map server has more tiles, generates more tiles, but in the end it's uh, 27 tiles per second, which is the the fastest thing we, we got out. So that's tile generation or tile seeding. And for tile serving, we see here a diagram with uh, the number of connections, so it's which is like more users at the same time and requests per second, uh, and uh, the y-axis, and you see that T-Rex is, is faster here, and it has a little bit more spread. Um, map server is quite con consistent, um, but here I think it's mainly a test between Apache and this T-Rex uh, web server, which is really an extremely optimized asynchronous uh, web server written in Rust, so the max maximum we got out here is 19,000 or around 20,000 tiles per second for T-Rex and 6,500 tiles per second for Apache Map Server. So I already mentioned some open points. This number of tiles is a little bit fishy. Uh, and then we should certainly improve all the scripts that it is easy to run it on multiple servers. We should have one server for the PostGIS database, one server for or multiple servers for seeding, and one server for the client measurement. That we haven't done that yet. And maybe we should also measure the simplification. Is it really done? Is it done well? We have this visual check, you saw the map on the third slide, so we check that visually, um, and we check certain slides, we count uh, the features within uh, certain tiles, we count features uh, within that tile and compare that, um, but maybe we even need some kind of measurement to, to verify that the tiles are really good. And we didn't verify clipping, we hope that both did that clipping, we assume that. And on map server, as Carson already mentioned, this set parameter query filter isn't implemented yet. We could do that with a template or with by hand. And we had a strange message with when checking the tiles from OGR info that it says even is here, you can read that, <laughs> maybe you can answer that. Uh, <laughs> parsing error occurred at line nine four five. And this line, I think, is in the vector tile. No idea what that means. Um, <laughs> so these are some open points. What else? I think, yeah, that's, that's the most important things to do. And so we come to the conclusions. I mean, benchmarking is is helping us, helping the projects to improve. So that's one goal of benchmarking. It also helps to think about requirements and it helps users to to see the differences between projects, what they can do, what they can't do, or maybe what I need and what I don't need. And we're really open for more contestants. Please come to us or please go to the repository. There is a template for new servers. I even started some, uh, did some starting points for other servers to 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 uh, try and there is, everything is dockerized, so there are docker containers, you have a, a database which is ready for testing. It's really far easier than back then this WMS's benchmark which took extremely a lot of effort. So it, we really tried to make it easier uh, for other people to use this benchmark, maybe only for their own projects. <laughs> and what my goal would be that we have next year in Calgary at least 10 participants and, and then we have real numbers and a real comparison. But I think it, it, gives you, it gives a good starting point for the project, for people 
to see what's important and and what figures we're talking about. Thank you. Uh, okay, now we have now we have a uh, uh, about five minutes for questions, and then we break for lunch. Questions? Well, if, if, it, if I may lead off with a question. Uh, uh, so were you, uh, in this, doing this comparison, are you, uh, how is the database uh, organized? How is it indexed? And were you, were you using the same database for both uh, tile generation runs? It was exactly the same database, but I must confess that we didn't properly optimize, as I saw in the talk earlier, so maybe we should do that, but it was the, both, it was the same for both, so it didn't uh, matter for the, the benchmark itself. But we should optimize that more, and I, didn't for, I did forget, we also have to update the database to a new version because the STS MVT is not new enough for, the, for doing STS MVT benchmark, so that's that's why we had to cancel that. Yeah, I might have a question. Um, I saw that the simplification is in the uh, generating of the tiles. So we never put simplification uh, on a vector tile generator. We always do our simplification before in the database because you have much more control, but it's also part of your benchmark. So I was just wondering, like, is it necessary to include it, or is it necessary to include it in the factor tile generators? Um, just wanted to have your ideas on that as well. Yeah, it's a good, good point. Usually, in my project, I always do that when generating the tiles, but you're right, maybe you should do that earlier. And in this case, with natural earth, it is already done, so we, we we don't have to do it, but maybe you should do both. I, I still think it's an important functionality you would expect from a, a, a vector tile server. But yeah, okay. Um, that's a question for you, actually. Uh, I saw uh, in the map file uh, a database query which was like a um, nested query. Did you? check how optimal that um, so like select as temp um, did you create the most optimal uh, database query did you check on that so this is just the regular um, syntax in map server it has to be a subquery because what the data statement takes in is only the geometry so to get the attributes I need the nested query I'm not aware of any other option in there. It's just a requirement how that is built. Uh, that might also <coughs> explain why it's slower, I guess. Uh, uh, actually, it's not a real uh, subquery. It's ah. just map server syntax. syntax yeah. expressed, uh, ah, okay. Well, yeah. I, I can't really see it. There, but <laughs> but so it's not a subquery. Okay. Yeah, it, it is uh, like a, um, a fake SQL. It's just taking the geometry out of this query for okay. map server purposes. <laughs> Quick question about TRX. Are you planning porting it to a GPU running where you can see even more posts in the vector tiling? Uh, not planned yet. Interesting, but it's not planned. Question to map server. The buffer is set on a tile, not on a layer. Wait, is that a question? Yeah, I, I'm asking, yeah. Is, is there, a, because uh, in OpenMap tiles, uh, the buffers are set per layer, it makes much sense if, because labels need much larger buffer than uh, polygons or lines uh, where you don't need overlapping. So uh, so if by design, I haven't seen this before, so I'm, I'm just asking, is this restriction of map server that you set uh, the, the buffer on layer, uh, on a tile and all layers in a single tile has the same buffer? Yes, so basically okay. what you see, the output format is for the whole map. Mm -hmm. And also there was some restriction we found because initially we requested from this WMS request just the individual layers. And there was some kind of slight <coughs> bug po po possibly because the way if you make the layer zoom dependent on a certain zoom scale, the way you do the map server, you just replicate the layer and, and set you know, the zoom 
requirements. So then, you know, the request just changes, switches out which layer is in that Zoom, where uh, in T-Rex you could do that directly in the query. We couldn't do that. And there was a small glitch doing this. So what we did, we requested the whole WMS, and then you see status off is actually, we changed that to status on. So if I request the WMS, I get all the layers I mean, and that small glitch went away. So at the moment, I was setting this on the whole map file, but it's a good input. I'm not aware that you can set it on the layer, but I will pick Steve Lime's mind while trying to document this, because what is there actually, there's a demo from Steve Lime, that's the only thing that's out there that works, kind of. And from there, you know, we should have that documented. Okay, well, uh, we're out of time, so thank you all for coming. Thank you very much. Wonderful talk. <laughs>